Welcome to the New School of Marketing podcast, the place for smart, simple strategies that will amplify your business results. Sharing practical tips, insider knowledge and actionable advice because marketing is something that every business owner can do. Now, let's get started. Introducing your host, Bianca McKenzie, mum, lover of snow sports, camping, horse riding and in-demand launch strategist and Facebook advertising knowledge bank. Welcome to the New School of Marketing podcast. I'm Bianca McKenzie, and today I'm talking about building a profitable product-based business with Melissa Robbins. With over 20 years of experience in everything business, retail, fashion, marketing, and sales, Melissa helps business owners gain clarity and direction in their business. She offers straightforward, practical, and genuine business advice to startups and side hustlers, as well as established business turning over millions. And a little fact about Melissa, she likes banana on pizza. All right, let's clear this up first, Mel. Not on every pizza, right? Not on every pizza, just on particular pizzas. I I know it's strange. I get, I get, I think people will, um, it does put some people off and not sure if they can be actually be friends with me if this is the case, but it is a fact. I think it's a pretty cool fact, to be honest. It sets you apart from everyone else. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Bianca. I am super excited to have you here. All right, let's dive in because I know that you are a pool of knowledge on anything product-based business. So so for anyone listening and anyone thinking of opening an online or physical store with like actual physical products but hasn't opened it yet, what advice would you give to them about getting started? Well, the, the main thing I would um, start with is do your research. So really have a think about, you know, um, finding out, talking to people who have been there, done that before, what their experience is. Those people have actually, you know, been in the um, actual area that you wanted to go into. So whether that is, you know, um, looking at what platform you should host your website on. Um, if it's e-commerce, I highly recommend Shopify. Um, whether that is, you know, understanding the market at the moment, like what are the popular products, what sort of margin should you have on your products, really make sure you do your research so that you've um, ticked the boxes and you sort of had planned ahead, I, I would suggest. And even if that means doing a little um, simple business plan, so thinking about where, what sales you would like, what product you need to back up those sales and, you know, what, what marketing you're going to do, where you're going to get your cash flow from. Sort of having to think about all those little elements will really help you um, set yourself up from the start in the right way. If, if it's physical, I just wanted to mention that um, I was working with a client the other day on, you know, she's thinking about opening a store and whether it's a good time. And, you know, it really depends on what you're offering and where you are and what, what sort of people you can um, get come to you or what if you've got an audience or product that suits and thinking about your physical location like what else is near you so if you've found a you know an amazing space what else is there to bring people to you or if it is an isolated location what are you going to do in terms of your marketing to get people to come to you so having to think about that in terms of physical location is really important whether it means you're you know, near a hairdresser or a fruit store that people come to regularly, what are the things that um, are going to draw people or you get, how are you going to get foot traffic in your store? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important because you can have the most amazing product in the world, but if nobody can find you, then mm-hmm. not yep, going that's anywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the online retailer space and even products, based space is quite crowded do you have any tips for people on how to stand out from the crowd like how do they get noticed and seen yeah I I you know it's a tricky one and it is one of those things that there is always going to be you know naysayers or people say like oh what are you doing that for you know um there's already a zillion other stores and To that, I'll just say that, you know, you have to have something different. You have to be somehow unique, um, have a, you know, a a different product mix or a completely new product or your branding is out of this world. You've got to have something that makes you stand out compared to other people. And you've also got to be prepared to invest in that ongoing and always evolve and test different things and trial different things. So, yeah, how are you going to be unique is my question in there to make sure that you're not the same as everyone else. Yeah, yeah, 
And so this leads us to the next sort of question. And we are both quite familiar with running a business and growing a business. And you've kind of hinted on it already, having like a USP. So the term USP is often thrown around. Can you talk yes. a little bit more about what it is? Because, you know, I'm just sort of keeping the mystery there uh, and why it is important for a business to have a USP. So, yeah, tell us, what is it? Absolutely. So your USP is, yeah, your unique selling position or proposition. So what is different about you? So, you know, often for a service-based business, that may be something that is all about you, you know, your background, your experience, um, what you're bringing to, you know, your, your, your clients is different to other people because it's you. So that, you know, that makes you stand out compared to other people and the way that you combine your background and history in, you know, what message you put out there for a product-based business. Um, it has to be more about, you know, whether it's a new product or a new design, um, is it a new packaging element? So what is it that's different to you, to other people? Um, so an example I've got of that, well, I, I had this, oh, I, I think I, saw it on, I I obviously found it through Instagram, which is where I find, you know, many different products, yeah. but there was a um, Dutch oven cookware company. I think it's, it's called Great Jones. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. Bianca, but no, I haven't. But essentially, it's like a you know Dutch oven cook, like a Le Creuset. Yeah. Um, but you know they've had the market for so long, and this one is just a, a new um, primary color, or you know not necessarily primary color. Sorry, bold colors. Um, it's really sleek, slim line. They're obviously hitting the different target market to the um, Le Creuset market, but they've just got the same product, but they've packaged it and um, developed it in a way that's unique to them. It's completely different. Yeah. Um, the way that they use influencers is different to other people. So how can you, you may have the same product as someone else, but how can you make it look different, feel different or market it differently so that your message is unique? You have to sort of stand for something um that's different and whether in fashion is your combination of fabrics or your, you know, your design or whether it is in your styling um, for a retail store, how can you stand out or your product mix be different to everyone else? That's just definitely something that everyone needs to consider and have a think about. Yeah. It's like, it sort of answered that question of why should someone purchase from you when the product is exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's customer service, you know, like yeah. there are a lot of lifestyle stores that I work with and they do have similar product mixes, but you know, the way that they service their customers, whether it's local or online is different to other people. Yeah. So what you put into that is really important. And it also comes back to why you need to have your face behind the uh, in front of the brand as well or in front of your um your business so that that's something that's unique about your business you so the way you tell the story or the way that you share the products that you have and show how they can be styled or whatever that is something that's different so I think it's important to tell your story and why you're doing what you're doing as well yes completely I 100% agree having that unique point is super important Mm -hmm. um So when people decide that they want to sell a physical product, they often think about setting up a physical store or an online store because, you know, we do so much online, especially during lockdown. I've just been shopping online all the time. Um, But there are (laughs) more. Yeah, exactly. No choice. (laughs) But there are more options than just having those two sort of places. Can you talk a little bit more about what people need to consider and what they can, like other options they can explore? Absolutely. So I think it is important to consider this as, you know, like your different revenue streams essentially. So if you sell a product, do you just sell it retail? Do you sell it wholesale? Do you do markets to, you know, get feedback and get um, in front of people if, you, if you're only selling online? Um, do you, you know, do a pop-up in someone else's store or collaborate with someone so that you can, you know, reach more people? Um, do you 
you know, work with corporate groups to sort of, you know, ha- have things in hampers or things like that as well. Like there are different ways. It, ca- it doesn't necessarily have to be just one um, method of sales channel, as you, as you said, like it doesn't have to just be online or it doesn't just have to be retail. You can, um, you know, add on those other things and elements depends on what your product is and whether it's um, appropriate or not. But so many people I've um, worked with in the past have, yeah, started at markets or they've, they've worked at a market or sorry, they've run a, run a market and then they've also sold wholesale from that. And then they've gone into, you know, um, their own retail space or a pop-up. So there's yep. definitely options. It shouldn't just be, I, I think you shouldn't just have one revenue stream because otherwise it does limit you. And, um, you know, if, if things change as we've just felt in the last, um, you know, year, yes. <laughs> then you need to sort of have different options of generating income. Yeah, there are so many options and I really love that about the physical space is that, you know, with digital you're kind of like limited to online because, you know, you can only sell it online. But with physical, yeah, you can be in so many different places. And I really like that you said markets to get in front of your customers because, and this goes from um, a background of having a a physical store, oh, sorry, not Mm -hmm. a physical store, an online store, is you don't get to see people's faces when they open your parcels or they actually interact with your product. So having those physical markets and right now in in Victoria, we can't really have them, but when, when we can, again, it is such a great place to actually interact with your customers and see them interact with your products, you know, touch them, feel them, explore them, ask questions about them. And we don't get that in an online space. So I really, I think that's good that you, you pointed that out, like having, having markets yeah. and, and getting that feedback. And, and I think that's relevant too, because you might, what often ends up happening is you end up selling completely different um, like bestsellers or things because something that may sell well um, online doesn't necessarily translate in a physical way. So you might end up having different things that sell in different locations as well. Yep. That's a really good point. Moving stock. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's a good way to, um, you know, move different things and, and maybe even have different price points if you're doing those different sales channels too, because yeah, for example, at a market, you might have market specials or you might sell bundles of things that you might not sell, um, online. So yeah, having, having choices and having different variety of what you, um, sell in one space to another is, is a good idea. Yep. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> so mm-hmm. As fellow marketers, we know how important it is to have a plan. Can you give the listeners some tips on how to create a marketing plan and tell them why it's so important? And I would love to hear your answers and I'm sure I can add to it too. (laughs) Yeah, you might need to, yeah. So essentially, yeah, I mean, you need to have a strategy and goals about what you want to achieve and then you need your plan to to how to action that, how to achieve those goals. So, you know, you can't just be, obviously marketing is all about trying to attract more people to you to have more eyes and ears, find out about you and engage with your brand or be exposed to your brand. So for my, um, like I work with um, this in my membership, actually, like we've talked about in the, one of the first few classes that we did, you know, what's your ongoing strategy of how to attract people? So you can't just be doing, you know, a discount promotion every month. That's, that's no good. You don't want to be um, competing on price all the time. Mm -hmm. What other things can you do? And, you know, whether that is for product-based businesses, you know, might be doing collaborations or a giveaway or um, a special gift with purchase or, you know, what sort of things can you work on in your business to have something regularly so that you always got a new way, new thing to talk about, a new, um, a new, um, you know, event happening or a new thing going on to always have interest and generate, you know, pull people from other other um, stores or customer bases if you're doing a collaboration because you can might be able to, you know, get customers from other places if they've got a like target market as well. Yeah. But yeah, really thinking about, you know, the whole, the you know, five P's or seven P's of marketing, like what are all the different things, you know, your price, your promotions, you know, what are the products, what does your packaging look like? You've got to be thinking of all the elements to really make sure that you've, built up that um, excitement about your brand or, you know, have you got limited amount of things? So you're building that scarcity factor. Um, do you have, 
you know, talk about something that's about to launch to put up that anticipation. What can you do in your business so that you've always got something going on um, and planning that out so that, you know, each, each month or each week or you've got something to talk about or something to focus on? Yeah, yeah, I love that. When And I still do this in my business. I sit down with a calendar for like yeah. six months, 12 months. I look at all the important dates and I love it because with retail, there are so many dates on the calendar, like there's after pay day and there's Black Friday and Cyber Monday and there's other days. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's other days. And then there's like all the other, like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. Like there are so many opportunities to create mm-hmm. marketing pieces around those days that you, like Absolutely. it's pretty easy to fill your calendar that way in, in, in my yeah. opinion. So yeah, like think about, okay, what can you do for this? And, what, and I'm doing this with my clients. I, I work with a number of retail stores and we're going to plan out, well, coming up to Christmas. So it's all about Christmas promotions and mm. um, advertising and, and things like that. So I really, yeah, I love that. Like there's so much to think about. And I think the reason I asked you this question is because a lot of us, and me included sometimes don't plan ahead all the time. We, we often very much in the moment, it's like, all right, customers here and, you know, orders to pack there and yeah. All right. What are we going to do to bring in the next customer Yeah, and, and the next and the next and, and the next? Absolutely. And sometimes you have to like, I, I'll give an example of um, when I had my retail store, I had um, this gorgeous gold um, gift bag that was everyone got for their, whenever they purchased something in store. And I, I had a kids wear store, so, or children's sort of lifestyle store. So I sold to mums and, and as well as the kids and I had a mini version for the kids and a mini and an adult version. And I, you know, but I had to, I had to order that 12 weeks out. So I had to make sure that I had that in stock to get it for the price. I think I ended up paying a dollar ten or dollar twenty per bag. So it wasn't wasn't a cheap exercise in terms of when you're giving it out for every purchase. Yeah. But yeah. the buzz that it generated, um, and the looks on the kids' faces when I gave them this gold shiny bag, they were beside themselves. And, you know, but I had to, yeah, as you say, plan that out far enough out to make sure that I had it for the right price and I could get it for the right time and then I could talk about it. And yeah, it, it definitely, um, that was money well spent on that, you know, small, small little, um, you know, add on for the customer. Yeah. Happy face <laughs> marketing yeah. budget for a happy face. <laughs> yeah. So you, that, talk, yeah. you just talked about like buying things and, and things in advance. So selling products often involves buying inventory and being out of pocket upfront in a way. Do you have any tips on projecting cash flow and like stock levels and yeah, working around that? Yeah, absolutely. Like it, oh look, it, it is a pain of, um, you know, retail, like you're always putting your money back into your stock. Um, and it definitely, it's hard to budget and plan around, you know, having money for your other expenses or other things as well as profit um, that doesn't always go back into stock. But as a, um, as is, you know, saying in retail that stock sells stock. So the more you have, the more you can sell. You really have to think about, I think, again, I just did this in the membership um, the other week. So it was all about buying smarter and planning um, what to spend your budget on. So you want to spend money on stock, but you want to spend money on the right stock. So how can you use the either your history or your data of what, um, what you're going to, what has sold well or what has done well and making sure you allocate the right amount of money to the right things. So there's no point having too much of the wrong stock. Um, you've got to have the right um, product mix in your in your range and really just sort of, you know, thinking about and, and it comes back to, you know, a really good point of sale system or a really good analytics that you get from your Shopify or whatever it might be. But you've really got to think about, well, or look at and say, you know, last season I, you know, sold 70% of my income came from dresses, for example. Well, you know, have you got the right amount of stock for that moving forward so that you can have a similar amount next season? Or if you're going to spend more money on one particular product or, or a product mix, you know, can you make sure that your marketing is allocated towards those products? So, you know, thinking about your marketing plan too, if you know you're going to have this big amount of product um, you know, a category of, as we said, dresses, then you can make sure that you do some really good imagery and advertising towards those products. 
So having the right amount of product at the right time of the right sort of mix is really crucial. And as I said, I think it comes back to looking at your data, um, thinking about what sales you want to achieve. And then if you've got the right amount of product at, um, to achieve the sales that you want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if you are brand new and you kind of haven't invested in that, it comes back to yeah. what you said at the start, doing your research really and talking to, like, obviously people are not going to give away their trade secrets, but pay attention <laughs> to yeah. what people in a similar space are doing and look at what is, if you can, look at what is selling in their stores and sold out and listed as sold out because it tells the story. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's really important as well that, you know, you've got to, it definitely requires risk. You have to take risks in this space. You have to, you know, either back a product um, or, you know, if you know that you can get a product a bit cheaper um, from your manufacturer, if you, you know, tip over a minimum, um, it might be, you know, you might have to order a hundred instead of 50 of an item. But if that's the case and you've got to make sure that you market that the right way to make sure that you can move through that product. And, but if it doesn't work, move on quickly, get rid of the product um, that hasn't worked and get your money back on it and then try and invest in a product that is going to give you better margin. Yeah. So don't hold on to things too long too. Like just try and turn it over. Yep flip it <laughs> yeah flip it yeah and if it's if it's not going to work you know there's no point at sitting on your shelf and taking up your cash flow you're better off getting rid of things I and mean, that yeah. can be a physical shelf in a store or you know on your online store have a flash sale do something that uh, you know market it in a certain way that you're going to move through that product then you can put that money back into new product and new stock and hopefully generate more margin on that new um revenue new stock that you have come in yeah great Really great tips, really great tips. I wish I'd known you when I had my physical <laughs> product. <laughs> well, I know that's, yeah, that is why I'm doing what I'm doing now with the membership because it is, I had the retail store for years and I had it with my sister for so long. And when she left, it was at the point where, you know, she'd just moved on to a different um, area, but she went and worked full time. You know, you don't have anyone to bounce ideas off. You don't have anyone to sort of mm. go to. And so having some sort of community advice, you know, tips and tricks, it's like I've learned a lot of these things after I had my store as well, after working with lots of different stores. Yeah. So it is that sort of thing, you know, I, I wished I had it. So again, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> that's what I love. Oh, right, well, that's the end of the, these kind of questions. I have a few more questions for you. Ooh. What are you curious about right now? Oh. You know what, I'm, you know, obviously I'm in, I'm in Melbourne, so I'm still, obviously we're still in pretty much in lockdown, but um, mm-hmm. it's one of those things where I would interested to see how things are going to change in the retail market, in the online space, how things are going to change in the next, you know, six or 12 months, what they're going to look like. Like, are we going to take lessons learned or things that we've picked up in this last year um, and evolve or they're going to go back to how they were I'm sort of yeah I'm interested yeah. to see what's going to happen what's how, how things are going to change I'll be curious to see that too mm. watch this space yeah. hopefully uh yeah Tony doesn't have too many more surprises in store yeah. <laughs> it's been full of them <sighs> yeah okay and if you had an extra thousand dollars in your marketing budget what would you spend it on mm. It's a good question, this one. I'm right now, for me, I'm really trying to get my messaging right. So I think there's a lot, you know, I think a lot more people can um, work on their messaging. Um, They're, you know, using copywriters and making sure that they express who they are, what they do, what they've got to offer in a better way. So I'm, that's what I'm sort of looking at now, really trying to make sure I can do that for my, my business as well. Good way to spend your money. <laughs> Copywriters mm. are worth their weight in gold, I reckon. <laughs> I, totally. And and it's something that I've probably only really appreciated in the last probably year, um, how much impact they can have and how it can make a big difference to, yeah, you, you know, you, what how people view you or what people, um, what, what perspective they take when they first come across you. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a good way to spend your money. Um, yes. So 
That is the end of this week's show. If you have any questions about building a profitable product-based business, head on to thelotco.com.au and I'll have all the links in the show notes as well. A really big thanks to you, Mel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've loved having a chat. It was my pleasure. All my pleasure. And thanks to you for listening. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you heard the podcast. Your review will help others find the show and learn more about the amazing world of online marketing. And don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at newschoolofmarketing.com where you can learn more about Mel, check out useful links, download free resources, and leave a comment about the show. 